Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast series, Salo Speak. Salo Speak is a platform where we invite Amazon experts from different domains to share their business secrets to help sellers succeed in their Amazon journey. Today, we have Gian Marco Melli with us. Well, Gian Marco is an Amazon seller who started his e-commerce journey in Shanghai, where he launched an online platform backed by Venture Capital Fund, SOSV. He is also the host of The Seller Process, a weekly podcast that aims to empower Amazon sellers and e-commerce entrepreneurs with the right systems and SOPs to accomplish more in their business with less time and effort. Today, we'll be discussing about systems, processes, SOPs, and how to scale your Amazon business. So let's get started. Hi, Gian Marco. How are you? Welcome. Hello, hello. Nice to see you here. Yeah, I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for asking. I'm uh, very glad to, to be here. It feels amazing to have you on our podcast. And you are originally from Italy and you launched your first e-commerce business in Shanghai. How was your experience and what motivated you to launching a new business in a completely foreign land? Well, yeah. So I basically, you know, landed in in Shanghai just after university. I took a master program that was kind of like uh, half in Italy and half in uh, in Shanghai. So basically, I completed my studies there, and I started as an intern uh, when I was, uh, I think, in 2014. And then just a year after, I I hired my first intern in my first company. So that was kind of a, a very uh, interesting journey I had, and uh, yeah, I'm very I'm very glad I got that experience. I started basically, you know, just after after my study, uh, my passion for entrepreneurship led me to to build my my first business in Shanghai. Right, absolutely. This is truly inspirational. You also have written an ebook called Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs, which is a value packed guide on SOPs that is standard operating procedures, its importance and best practices. Now, what are the key mistakes to avoid when creating SOPs? Can you give us a real life example where this book has helped your clients in structuring SOPs for their businesses? Yeah, for sure. So first of all, thank you for mentioning the the SOP, the, the, the ebook on SOPs. Um, I'm sure people, lots lots of people benefit of that because, you know, they can find in just, uh, I think, uh, 20 pages, uh, everything that they need to know to start uh, systemizing their business. I would say, you know, the most common mistake I see people making is to not even creating the SOPs. You know, they, many times they think because they are just by themselves, you know, as solopreneurs, they think they don't need it, but actually that's where you start when you start needing to to create those SOPs. Because first of all, SOPs are not just for uh, uh, teamwork. They are there for, uh, to organize your, your own work, okay? So even solopreneurs will benefit of that, uh, absolutely. And then, you know, it, it's something that um, it, it will basically improve help you improve complex processes okay so if you keep everything in your mind uh, there there are chances that you are doing some some uh, steps that are not required or you are taking too much time focusing on something that it's it you, you can probably eliminate or or, or optimize Okay, so uh, the the mistake there is to is to not not creating them first of all, and then um, thinking thinking that uh, you are the um, it's not useful if you if it's just you in the company, and then uh, most people you know when they 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 go about SOPs with the with the mindset of set it and forget it, uh, they just create it once and they think they're done. But actually, the SOP is just your process, the way you do things in your company, which continuously evolves, right? So um, that's that's what you should you should have a mentality of uh, keep improving these SOPs and um, and updating it uh, uh, continuously. Uh, the way I, I I can give you some real life examples with my team, first of all. Uh, so basically, you know, I um, I give this uh, ebook to my team. It's part of the onboarding process. You know, whenever I ha- I hire a new VA or a, or a team member, uh, part of the first tasks uh, to uh, know better the company and know better their job is to actually read my ebook. And there, 
it's where they they learn about how to create SOPs and systems. And through that ebook, you know, then they they will start, you know, creating the the um, SOPs for the processes that they are responsible for. So basically, this way, uh, I've been able to to build. Um, then dozens, or maybe we're almost at a hundred uh, uh, SOPs. You know, not just by myself, but I, I've built it th thanks to the help of other of my of my team members. And you know, I see lots of people. You know, during my coaching calls, I do like one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with other Amazon sellers. And you know, this um, uh, this concept, this ebook, actually help them understand that it's not something so daunting that uh, as they think it is. Right? Most people think, "Oh, I'm gonna lose so much time." creating these processes and systems, but actually it's something you can do very easily and simply once you understand how, how to do it. And, you know, you can really start by simply, you know, recording a video of yourself going through the process and, and uh, uh, mentioning the steps out loud so that people will understand it. I think we're all familiar with like YouTube videos that explain how to do something. So, Think that way. Create create an SOP just by uh, in, in the same way you would create a, a YouTube video to explain something to to somebody else, right? So this will be your first SOP, and uh, you can do it right away in just five minutes. So uh, I would suggest everyone to to start. That's the main that's the main problem uh, and and common mistake people make. Right. Absolutely. I think truly your book is an inspiration for the Amazon sellers out there simple errors can quickly upend Amazon selling strategy. So working towards how to avoid those mistakes and maximizing the reach should we be striving for. Now, the main goal of an Amazon seller is to get, get more profits and increase the earning potential over time. But that doesn't happen all the time, right? So Gian Marco, what are the critical areas of the PNL that the seller should focus on to optimize their business for better profits? Yeah, for sure. So that's a that's a good question, and uh, we could actually have a, maybe a full podcast episode about about that, how to increase profitability, what to look at in the PNL. But uh, uh, in a in a short uh, you know in a short form, I'd like to maybe point at the uh, twenty percent of the of the task of the of what you can do in order to get 80% of the results. So if anyone looks at their PNL, which many times, you know, most people don't have a PNL. So first of all, you should have a PNL in order to understand you, the profitability of your business and the, the numbers, all the numbers. So assuming that you do have a PNL, you will see that there are at least uh, three three components of the PNL that make up majority of the expenses. So um, obviously we, we would like to, you know, to reduce to reduce expenses, increase revenue, and that's how we can get more profit, right? So if we focus on the, in decreasing these expenses, we will see that uh, FBA fees, advertising, and cost of goods sold will be the three major categories of expenses in our in our business. FBA fees accounts for 10, 20% of the overall uh, of a monthly revenue, for example, okay, and advertising spend, it's also many times between 10 and 20% of our monthly revenue. A cost of goods sold sometimes can go up to even more than 30%. Of, of our monthly revenue. So if we manage to reduce these three these three elements, then we will definitely improve our profitability. Uh, some tips I can give in each of these three uh, elements are, for example, to reduce FBA fees, we could look we could look at uh, things like product dimensions and the size tiers. Okay, so we could we could try to to make the products smaller because many times they are on the edge to to uh, two different size tiers. So you should be very familiar with FBA fees and understand you know, which one, uh, what, what can you tweak in the product in order to fall into the lower size tier and weight tiers, okay? So you should look at dimensions and weight. And then you can, you can for example, subscribe at uh, programs like Small and Light. Sometimes people are not aware of that and Amazon actually just raised the, the, the threshold. So now more and more products actually can fall into Small and Light and people can, can benefit of um, discounts in FBA fees. Uh, if we go to advertising, 
costs. We can we can cut advertising costs by you know being mindful about how we manage uh, PPC. Uh, we can use software that help us with that. We can use day uh, day time parting, right? So maybe uh, shutting down the ads uh, during nighttime, for example. But the biggest uh, the biggest thing you can do in order to decrease your advertising cost and your A cost or your take costs, you know, uh, it's it's basically increasing your improving your conversion rates. Okay, so if you improve your conversion rates, then your ads will convert better. They will spend less. CPC will go down, and A cost will go down, and and everybody's happy. So that's that's the, that's basically uh, the the best way to to increase to decrease ad ad costs. And then third uh, tips to to decrease cost of goods sold is that obviously you can make larger orders. Uh, if you if you order instead of ordering uh, every every few weeks of, of every month, maybe you can make a large order that will last for the ne the next four to five months, and then you can negotiate better prices with your with your supplier. And uh, you can also optimize carbon uh, carton boxes, for example. That's another way um, to to uh, save on uh, shipping and logistics. Uh, you can also uh, inquire different suppliers and and find better prices from other suppliers. But uh, you know, one one of my best suggestions, which has worked very well for me, is to basically befriend with uh, with the owner of the factory, be, become a friend with the supplier, because uh, you you don't know. Like actually, if if most people actually are, you know, uh, sourcing from China, uh, you will find that Chinese people uh, value a lot, you know, relationships. So uh, if you if you become a, a good friend of your supplier, then they they will return you uh, favor with you know discounts and uh, lots of benefits. So that that's my best suggestion to to uh, increase profitability. Looking at your PNL. Wow, I think strategic PNL management will help sellers keep earnings positive and minimize their expenses. And creating PL statements frequently and implementing changes as needed are one of the four steps in knowing where your business stands financially and making necessary changes to increase profits. So, Gian Marco, you have dedicated the majority of your working life to master fundamental business skills with a particular focus on the development of systems and standard procedures inside organizations. So what, according to you, sets the difference between being an entrepreneur and a business owner? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, uh, you know, what I would say, uh, kind of a definition that I, I uh, have for that, it's uh, like business owners are the ones who created a job for, for themselves. But entrepreneurs are the ones who create jobs for others. OK, so, um, you know, mo mo many times you will see like small business owners, basically, uh, they, they are caught up into the, all the day by day operations. Uh, while, you know, I think we, we all kind of um, sign up for this, you know, as the entrepreneurs to 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 get more freedom. If you if you ask uh, most entrepreneurs, I think uh, they will they will tell you that they started their own business because they were looking for more freedom, right? I think that that's the majority of people think that way. So if you're if we are all looking for freedom, then we should not think uh, with a business owner perspective just to just to save money or or you know because we think we're the best at doing something we we do everything by ourselves actually you know uh, if you really want to scale the the best way is to basically uh, start outsourcing the, the the daily operations to to team members start building a team and uh, and delegate uh, as much as possible so that you can work more on the things that you're best at and uh, and work more on the business on the business instead of uh, in in the business operations so there is actually a, a famous author that i like to quote mike Michalowicz, he brought clockwork he brought profit first you know lots of you know great business books and he's always saying that you know if you are doing everything by yourself you're kind of like stealing jobs from others because other people could do that job instead of you so you're stealing job and shame on you that you are uh, stealing those jobs okay you should actually 
be a giver. You should give those jobs to other people who can take better care uh, instead of you. So that that's what I like to quote. And I think, you know, um, people should think more um, in, in, a, in an abundant kind of way, thinking that, you know, there is job for everybody, you know, inside the company, you can create job for others and you can build a team and start scaling your business. Otherwise, if you stay in that kind of business owner limited mindset, you will probably forever stay, you know, at kind of like low revenue levels and you will never grow as much as you could and you're just wasting your potential that it can be much larger. So yeah, just be courageous to to take that next step and uh, build your team, delegate and um, yeah, learn how to be a, a real entrepreneur. Surely, I think those were some amazing details, uh, Gian. I think most of them have this assumption that business owner and entrepreneur are the same, but both words refer to a distinct approach to business thanks to your inputs. So I have been talking to Amazon sellers who are managing seven to eight figure businesses for the past few months. And when it comes to expansion of business, automation plays a crucial role. Since you are the master of systems and processes, what are your expert strategies for scaling the business and taking it into the next level? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Actually, I love it. So uh, I actually build a framework for this, which I share with my clients uh, on one-to-one mentoring calls I have. So basically, I divide you know, uh, the, the growth of the company in two stages when you are uh, below seven figures you're making less between zero obviously and eighty thousand dollars a month right and uh, the second stage is from eighty thousand to above like five hundred thousand dollars it's the next stage above that you know you're gonna be like an eight figure uh, almost an eight figure seller and more but um uh, that's so the, in the first stage basically when you're you're just starting when you're below seven figures uh the problem is that you don't know what you're doing most of the times so the objective is to find the, the right niche and products to sell and uh increasing sales by dominating one niche what i what i mean by that is that the strategy that i suggest for for people to go from from zero to seven figures is to stay laser focused on one brand one category one customer avatar one supplier and one channel by one channel i mean just amazon okay so basically how can you do that you can create multiple variations of the same product you can create upsells uh, uh so for example more of the same product if there is a pack of one you can build a pack of two a pack of four and, and so on create cross sales so complementary products that can be sold together with your current product or you can sell in addition product categories within the same niche okay so just keep keep, keep in mind you should you should stay within one niche or you can create virtual bundles for example and uh, also also expand in other amazon marketplaces D don't just add new channels but you can easily expand in other market places like if you're starting from Canada you can easily expand in uh, so sorry if you're starting from the US you can easily expand in Canada for example right so that's kind of an easy win so I think you know when you're doing this right if you focus on one brand one category one one customer avatar you start to become an expert in that you start creating lots of very different variations of the same products you start dominating that niche and that I would say really it's just enough to take you to the seven figure level once you are in the seven figure level then so we're talking about scaling up even further and that's where you start you know building building the brand okay you need to put a, a lot more focus on building the brand okay before you were just you know selling products obviously you need to still focus on the brand but now it's time to really uh tweak everything in order to to make everything to make uh, your brand really be uh, uh like like a household brand the one that you see in in the supermarkets in television and so on so you can you can now then uh, start venturing in new categories uh you can um so so we're talking about expanding right so uh building the brand the new categories external traffic uh use uh, use leverage uh like for example uh, building a team uh or or uh, raising money you know getting external capital from 
you know, there are lots of um, uh, institutions that can give you money, banks, but not just banks, uh, in order to grow. Uh, then you can use leverage as uh, systems uh, or, or you know, uh, media, like paid media, um, external traffic, we said, like uh, um, social media, social media traffic, Google, and so on. And then you can expand in multiple channels like uh, Shopify or Walmart or eBay. Okay, so you can see the transition. First, uh, in order to get to seven figures, you just need to stay on Amazon. Think about one product, one category, one customer avatar. Then the transition, once you reach seven figures to scale even further, it will be to build a brand, to include multiple streams of traffic, not just Amazon. And uh, building the team and uh, expanding in other channels, not just Amazon, but other other channels and venturing in other categories so that you you look like a a real solid brand that has, you know, products in several, several categories that help each other grow. So that's kind of my my framework to to scale the business like from zero to multiple seven figures. Wonderful insights, Gian Marco. I, uh, you know, I think keeping the big picture of building the right team and keeping your company vision in focus will assist seller's business to be in a stronger position to successfully scale. Now, fulfillment by Amazon allows sellers to provide fast shipping, quality customer service, and even returns processing through Amazon's vast fulfillment and customer service network. Can sellers use a non-partnered carrier for FBA inbound shipments? And what is the difference between SPD, LTL, and FTL, according to you? Yeah, so uh, for sure, people can can use also non-partnered carriers for FBA inbound shipments. Uh, this the the um, ac- acronyms you mentioned is something that people will find uh, whenever they're creating a shipping plan. They will find that they can choose. SPD, LTL, uh, FTL. Uh, so uh, these acronyms means SPD. It's, it means um, small parcel delivery. Basically, it's when you have a bunch of units packed into into a box that it's labeled and you know delivered to to uh, the FBA warehouse. Uh, that usually it's made from uh, companies like um, UPS, DHL, or FedEx. Okay, so there's this this kind of express companies that deliver a small part uh, using this this way a small parcel delivery. Uh, there is a there is a, um, a limitation of uh, 200 boxes if you're using a partner career or 500 boxes if you're using a non-partner career. So if you need to send um, more than that, obviously uh, SPD it's not you know the the main way. Um, we, you will use other other uh, ways like LTL, which I, I'm going to um, mention in a while. But actually, some, something I think it's worth mentioning is that uh, if you're using a non-partner career in order to, to send boxes to Amazon, you, your career must be registered uh, through to, to Amazon directly in order to make an appointment. Okay, so it's not something. Uh, like anyone, you know, can drive packages to have to an FBA facility. I mean, the, you must be like a, a registered company, uh, registered with Amazon to be allowed to uh, send products to to Amazon. Usually, you know, if you work with any uh, freight forwarder, they obviously register with Amazon, so there's there's gonna be no problem. So usually, it's for smaller kind of shipments, but you you can grow pretty big. You know, 500 boxes for most people. It, it's a lot. And I still, for example, use uh, the SPD method because um, it, it you, you, you can grow even multiple seven figures just using SPD. Uh, but also LTL, it's another another option means less than truckload. It's basically when you when you take a portion of a of a truck and uh, to, to store to store and ship your product. So that's basically another Another option uh, that you have in Seller Central to to send the products usually then they, these are managed by a private tracking company, not this 
this one I mentioned, like UPS, DHL. So these are like private tracking company. It can be less exp- It can be uh, more, more cost effective because um, you, you can ship in pallets. Usually, usually in LTL, you ship in pallets, and you have to, obviously you need to um, follow the requirements that Amazon gives. And FTL, lastly, it's full track load, uh, which means basically is the same as LTL, but you you book the full track. So uh, the advantage of that is that usually um, it, it, could, it could be faster, it could be better if the products are fra- fragile or uh, they have some expiration date because um, you know you could you could basically the, the whole track is yours. So um, the the track will not step by you know different locations and then uh, unload and up upload the the, the track. Uh, so they basically it w- will minimize damages from handling uh, the same co- career because uh, there is no transfer of goods uh, in, on the way. So yeah, this is this is mostly you know the difference between uh, SPD, LTL, and FTL. You know there are, there are differences in prices and difference in in shipment speed that you can obviously always you know discuss with your freight forwarder to to have a, a more clear idea. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for equipping us with right knowledge essentials. This will definitely help our viewers to run their shipment processes smoother. And with this, we have almost reached the end of the session. Thank you so much, Gian Marco, for sharing your expert tips with us. I'm sure all the sellers watching this video have got a better understanding of how to scale Amazon business by optimizing and streamlining the systems and SOPs. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. I enjoyed it. Yes. And a big thank you to our audience for being a part of this. Your support means a lot to us. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to Salaraf. Do click the bell icon so that you will never miss on any other video. We are coming up with exciting podcasts every Friday, so stay tuned. And until the next time I see you, happy selling.